Hello everyone, this is Wilson here. We are going to find the local maximum and minimum values of this rational function. And we are going to use the first derivative test to find the local maximum and minimum values. Okay, so let's get started. First, we need to find the derivative so that we can find the critical numbers. And so when we are doing the derivative, we are going to use the quotient rule for this. So f prime, right? So let's start taking the derivative here. We are going to, um, so we are going to differentiate the numerator, which is going to be three. So let me just highlight the differentiation here. So we are going to get three here. And then what do we get in the, um, we are going to copy from the denominator, right? So that's going to be x squared plus four. So let's know that we are doing quotient rule. So we have minus, and then the next, step it's going to be what it's going to be just copying the numerator and then we are going to differentiate the denominator which is going to be 2x i'm going to use the wrong color for this one but actually it doesn't really matter okay now what about the denominator for the denominator we are going to square the x squared plus 4 so that's our derivative. And then we can um, simplify by combining like turns, right? Distri doing, distributing the three and then combining like turns. So we are going to get, what do we get here? We have three x squared and then that's six x squared. So when we subtract them, we are going to get negative uh, three x squared. So we are gonna get negative three x squared and then plus, now there is only uh, there is only one turn left that we need to write down here. That's three times the four, which is twelve. So now that's the numerator, and we actually don't need to do anything to the denominator. Okay, and then it would actually be a good idea to factor out um, uh, leg three from the numerator, which would give negative three times x squared, what is that? That's minus four, okay. Oh yeah, so we can simply just write down, the, just make a note right here to just to indicate that that's what we are doing, right? Yeah, so it comes from here, it comes from the numerator, okay? Now, you know that we can factor this x squared minus 4 further, right? So we can factor it as continue to factor this would be what? Negative 3 and then x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so our um, factor form for the first derivative would be negative 3, x plus 2, times x minus two. And then we do not really touch the denominator. So we'll just leave it x squared plus four, and then that's square. Okay, so that's the first derivative. Next step is that we need to find the critical numbers. And so to find the critical numbers, we are going to do this. We, let's just write down the critical numbers right here. Yeah, so to find critical numbers, we have two cases, okay? So one of the cases, one of the cases is that we have f prime is equal to zero. <clears throat> now for f prime equal to zero, this is the fraction here. What we want is that in order for a fraction to be equal to zero, we want the numerator to be zero, but the denominator is not zero at the same time. So that means we can set this leg to three and then x plus two times x minus two equal to zero because that's not the same as the uh, the denominator, right? So the denominator will not be uh, be zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So what happened is that we are getting, what do we get here? We are getting this blue expression, right? So we have leg to three times x plus two and then x minus two, it's equal to zero. Okay, so, and then that actually tells you that the two critical numbers that we're getting is x equals negative two and then x equals positive two. Okay, so that's case one, right? The second case 
is that f prime does not exist. So we want to find x values that when we plug into the um, f prime it will be it will cause a problem. And in this case, that's when the denominator is equal to zero for a fraction. So this x squared plus four square is equal to zero. Now, we, when we are consider, considering only x real numbers x, then we are actually not going to be able to get a real solution for this equation. So there are actually no values for this case. So the only two critical numbers that we have would be uh, negative 2 and then positive 2. Okay, so the next step is the sign analysis chart. So what we are going to do is that we are going to set up the chart right here. So let's do that. So here we have the sign analysis chart. And then this is actually the lumber line, right? The x-axis. And then we are going to label the, um, the negative 2 on there. And then we label the positive 2 on there. Uh, make sure that we label the smaller number on the left side. Right, so even if we got two here and then negative two here, we still need to label the negative two on the left side of the lumber line. Okay, so those two critical numbers will break the lumber line into three intervals. And then we are going to just pick some numbers right now. Okay, so we are going to pick what do we need to pick here. Uh, between negative two and two, it's easy. We can pick zero, right? And then on the right side of the two, we can pick. Um, 1000 and then on the left side of the negative 2 we can pick negative 1000 so now if we are plugging 0 into our derivative then we can just plug that into the factor form so that will be easier for us to figure out the sign so when we plug the 0 in there that's negative that's okay so let's just write those things down right so we are going to get the form to be what is that? That's negative. Okay. And then when we plug the zero into this, zero plus two, that's positive. And then when we plug the zero in here, zero minus two, that's going to be negative. And then now for the denominator, because we have a square on the outside, the whole quantity, this is always positive, right? So we do not really need to worry about the bottom part right here. We only need to worry about the top part to determine the sign because the bottom, it's always positive. So we do not really need to worry about it anymore. So in this case, we just count how many number of negative signs that we have here. We have two negative signs. And because that's an even number of negative signs, we are going to get um, a, a positive quantity for this interval here. So that's positive here. And so what that means is that um, the function is increasing from negative two to two. Okay, so now let's do, let's just keep doing the checking with um, the other two intervals with the 1000 here. So for the 1000, when we plug in the 1000 in here, this negative three is always negative, right? So we don't really need to just do any calculation. And when we plug the 1000 in here, 1000 plus two is positive. And then 1,000 minus 2 is also positive. So now because we have only one negative sign, then this result would be negative. So if the function is decreasing uh, from 2 to infinity. OK, same thing here with the negative 1,000. We are going to just do the check. And then so the negative 3 is always negative, so we don't need to worry about it here. Negative 1,000, that would make it a negative here. And then negative 1,000 minus 2, that will also make it negative. And because we have three negative signs right here, then our result will also be a negative number when we multiply those three numbers together. And so what does that mean? That means we can say that um, the function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. And then it's increasing from negative 2 to 2. And then it's going to be uh, decreasing after the 2, right, from 2 to infinity. So we can actually write out all the... Um, 
information here, we can write down the increasing intervals right here. So for the increasing intervals, what is that? That's actually just like the two to two, right? So like the two to two. And then for the decreasing intervals, then we are getting what we are going to get um, for this interval here, it's going to be like the infinity, right? Like the infinity to like the two. And the other one is going to be what? From two to a positive infinity. So we have two to a positive infinity. Okay. Now, using the first derivative test, we can actually see what, uh, which one is the local maximum, which one is the local minimum. Okay, so for the negative two, because the function changes from decreasing to increasing, then we can see that the curve looks like this. It first goes down, and then after negative two, it goes up. So we have a function that looks like this. So that's a local minimum. And then for the two, the function changes from increasing to decreasing. Then we can see that that's increasing first and then decreasing after. So that will actually give us the what um, uh, local maximum. Okay. So now we just need to find the values by plugging those two, uh, two critical numbers back into the original function, and then we can get the values. Okay. So let's write down our results. So for a local maximum value, right? We have what? Let me see. So we have we have f. Okay, so local maximum is at two. So we got to plug in the two in here, and then it's going to be three times two over what is that? That's two squared plus four. Okay, so let's just plug that number in there. So we get the two and then the two here, two here. And then you do the calculation. And then if we do the calculation, that's going to be what's six, six over eight, right? So that's three over four. So that's our local maximum values. Just, just one value, right? I think that's, yeah. So that's just one local maximum value. And then the other one, the other one is a local minimum value. So, is what? Same thing here. You do some plugging in and calculation, basic calculation right there. So it's going to be like the two, like the two, like the two here. And then if you do all that calculation, you are going to get like the three over four. Yeah, so those are the values that we found. Okay, and if we want the point, right, if we want the point, we can also write down the point. And so the point for this one is going to be what? Two, three over four. Make sure you put the x value first. And then the point for the local minimum, um, it's going to be what? Negative two and then negative three over four. Okay, uh, yeah, so that's it for this problem. And then uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next.